monthly webinar. We are here in our Starkey offices in Baltimore, Maryland. Palatial. Rabbi, what'd you say? Palatial offices. <laughs> I'm Rabbi Tzvi Goldberg, and uh, we are joined today by Rabbi Moshe Farkas in Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh. Welcome, Rabbi. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And of course, to our regular uh, listeners, we have Rabbi Bayer. Been on many, many, many times. And uh, thank you for joining us, Rabbi Bayer. So I just want to make a few uh, technical introductions. Um, number one is, if you have some issue with the uh, with the uh, phone, with the, uh, uh, the your computer, you can reach us by phone at 267-279-9000. And enter conference 859-495-668. And uh, that way you can you can uh, someone said speak louder. See. Speak louder. Okay. Let's take a let's take a, a, a time out for a radio check. Can people hear us? If a few people who are listening, if you can just chat with us on the bottom right. Zev said it's loud enough. Okay. Thank you very much. She here is fine. Okay, Alba from Spain. Thank you very much. Okay, so I would say that uh, Ken, who has some issue with the sound, turn up your volume, because uh, we don't have any uh, any issue. As long as a few people can hear us, then we know it's getting out. Okay. Um, on the, as you can see on the bottom right of your screen, we have a chat, and in honor of today's webinar, you can also translate it to Hebrew. There is a button there that if you want to, you can use it to translate to Hebrew or any other language, Spanish, whatever language you'd like, to Portuguese, whatever language you'd like to translate it to. Um, is what we're saying going to be like subtitled also? <laughs> no. No. No, you just have a right, you have a way of translating <laughs> the chat to whatever language you want. Um, let, me, let me just start in saying that today, when, we're not promising you to, to talk about about individual certifications like with names and uh, you know and uh, all the the gory details. It's not that's not for for a, a, uh, for a public webinar. If you if you'd like, you can always you can always contact us and uh, and be in touch with us to get that information. We're talking from a general perspective. Um, what is Kashrus in Eretz Yisrael all about? And then in the second half of our webinar, we're going to speak with Rabbi Sean Fendler about Kashrus traveling around the United States. Rabbi Farkas, what is that? Uh, um, there's some background noise. Do you hear it? Yes, it's people. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Hashem, right. it's not like big mice or something. Okay. <laughs> There's some, there's some background noise on your side, I think. Uh, Is that better? Okay, hopefully it will be okay. Um, all right, so tell us tell us what you do, just generally, Rabbi Farkas. What's your, uh, what's your organization called? What do you do? Yes, we'll start off with that. So basically the organization um, that I work for is called Zinti Kosher, Vada Kashrus and Ertisrael. Basically helping Americans navigate uh, Kashrus and Ertisrael. When they come to Ertisrael, there, there's Bikahila living here in Yishlaim, Beit Shemesh, uh, a lot of different neighborhoods. Rabbi Shmuel Wiener spearheaded this project, um, I want to say somewhere between seven to eight years ago, where he, he, he's a Rav of a shul in Ramana Shkol called Zichron Asen Tzvi, and uh, basically catering to, started catering to his, uh, you know, his, his Hevra, and he's also Rebbe in the morning in uh, Rebbe Center's Yeshiva in the afternoon Taras Moshe. And basically, he became the go-to guy for Kashrus. And uh, based on that, we uh, started, you know, trying to get some restaurants and information about hotels and products. And we'll talk about all those details. So right. he does Kashrus during Ben Is that the idea? <laughs> um, it's actually, it's yeah, our phone lines are open from 2 to 3 p.m. Yeah, that's Ben Sturm officially, yeah. <laughs> so you showed me before a little card, Rabbi, Rabbi Farkas. Can you show us that, your, your, your business card? Okay, this so that's business CNT card. Kosher. Yeah, so you can see the email there, ZNTKosher at gmail.com. Get ready to right. answer all the emails that are going to come yeah. in. Right? 
Right. Okay. We and help then, with restaurants, hotels, and food products. Basically, when people go into shopping supermarkets, okay. we have many, many products from all over the world here. So it's a basically match the symbol to try to find that symbol. Like, where's Waldo? Try to find the symbol on your on your uh, <laughs> okay, on so your package four, of. Uh, you can just hold it there for a second, Rabbi. So those are the four hechsherim which we don't, which we are mentioning that are. Uh, you're basically saying that, you know, you see that you're good to go. The one on the top. Left is the Badats Yerushalayim, and then on the right is Badats Mahajan, Rabbi Rubin. The bottom left is Rabbi Landau, and the bottom right is Sheiris. So th- th- those Echsherim, you're saying that they're all they're all acceptable for all products. Right? Next next time we print up these cards, we're gonna have a star K in the middle. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna sell we're gonna sell that spot in the middle for. Uh, we'll talk about it after we go offline. <laughs> go offline. Okay, all right, yeah. very good. Um, ZNT, the question is, oh, yeah, okay. The, the question was, what does ZNT stand for? So it's not Zionist kosher, but it's Zichron. I was just going to say Zichron that. Zichron Nelson Svi, the name of Rabbi Weenie Stole my thunder. Okay. Right, right. right, right. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to uh, mention to, uh, the, if you know, we have, usually we have our regular listeners. We always have some new listeners that uh, it's, this is not a sheer, it's not a, a, a like a class, as you can see. It, it, it's really, you know, we deal with it as it comes up. We have obviously a, a plan to get through, but we take your, 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 your uh, chats and we have, you know, things that uh, we get sidetracked. We're just trying to give you an idea of what's, uh, what's going on in the bigger picture. So that number that they can call you between two and three Israeli time is 058 kosher J, right? Um, so in, 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 to translate that to English, <laughs> you know, if you're calling from America, you need to dial 011. 972-585-674-375. You know, is there uh, a way to post that somehow? Yeah, uh, oh, um, yeah we can. I can try uh, as as, you know, as soon as we get a chance. We'll try to do that. And that's between 2 and 3. I mean, we get phone calls all day, but officially I'm available between 2 and 3 p.m. Now that's we're what, getting a 7 secretary. That's what, 7 to 8 in the morning. 7 to 8 in the morning. 7, 7 to 8 in the morning in America. Okay. So uh, that's when they can reach you to ask you. Okay, so R- Rabbi Farkas, I, 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 I've been to Eretz Yisrael many times, many dozens of times, Baruch Hashem. And I've been working in Kashrus for a long time, over 20 years. When I go to Eretz Yisrael, I get nervous also. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, that's you know, not it's such not such a like, riot, Svi. I mean, you go anywhere, you get nervous, Svi. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that may be true. But what I mean is it's hard to understand why. This is a question that a lot of people want to understand. In America, they got to figure it out, okay? They go there to Israel, and all of a sudden, it's all, who knows what's going on? So right. give us some perspective of what is, what, what what's the what's the background? Why is that? Well, but, yeah. Right, Bayer. Bayer, you want to say something? No, I was just going to say it's very disillusioning when people... Without, if you don't know anything about Eretz Yisrael Kasheris, and then you come there, you think everything is kosher. I remember as a bacher coming there. This is going back, you know, a little ways, and and then being told that you can't just walk into every restaurant or everywhere ever and assume that it's fine, which was really uh, disappointing, actually. Correct. Um, basically, what we realized is that well, the the first nakuda really is is that um, it's the culture in Arizona is much different. Um, that you know, makes enough kamina when you're asking a question, how to relate to people, um, dealing with people. Kashrus is a lot, a lot of interpersonal, you know, getting information. So the, the culture in Eretz Yisrael and the Kashrus culture in Eretz Yisrael is very complicated. When you ask, is it kosher? The answer is everything's kosher. If you ask if it's bedats, <laughs> then they always say it's bedats. And everyone knows that bedats just means based in Sedek. It doesn't mean, you know, you know, bedats, say the is. So the first thing really is that it's a culture difference. So when people come from America, they're used to, let's say, having asking a question and getting a straight answer. And it's true. Sometimes you ask a question and you get a question back. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the first good. The second good really is, and I think I spoke to Ritzi about this before, um, cautious in general is a game of supply and demand. Um, if you go to Los Angeles or if you go to Baltimore, there's multiple restaurants, you, you know, because there's a demand for a high level of cautious. If you go to Wichita, Kansas, I'm not sure if there's a pizza shop there. So in Eretz Yisrael, everyone wants kosher, but I'm not sure if in, in every city they want the level of kosher that you're used to that you have in America. 
So in the big cities, Yushalayim, B'nai Brak, you have a big demand for that. But in the smaller cities, I don't want to name cities, but I'm saying when you get out there, um, they're basically catering to a different clientele. So when American goes to Eilat, but they don't know that I'm in Eilat, why can't I get a slice of pizza that you know would be up to, up to my standards? The answer is, is because there's not enough demand in that city for that for them to the supply. And, and the cheaper hashgachas, let's say, have cheap the products are cheaper. So you know the, the businesses aren't buying Eidacharetis cheese for their pizza, for for example, because they don't have to. They don't. It's not necessary. Aliza, Aliza asked, "Do you really think people in America understand kosher?" <laughs> uh, she I didn't say. Israel. I don't know if people in America understand kosher in America, but when you go to any city, even the small cities, you have these small vadim. You'll have someone that you can call and you can say, "What can I eat in this in in, in your city?" In Eretz Yisrael, and when Americans come, they don't have a local vad, so we're officially or theoretically your small little local vad. This, I mean, the ZNT is basically. Four people, three people, four people, and the rab, the rav, me. There's two other mashkichim. Um, it's a very small organization, and you know, we're, we get we get questions from people in North America, England, Australia, um, people whoever comes to Eretz Yisrael and speaks English, right? Because they're trying to. Another thing is besides the culture, also the, the language, the language itself. People don't people don't understand Ivrit. I saw your email. I don't speak Ivrit. How am I even going to navigate this? It's a it's so, a great service. I think that's a really wonderful service that you're yeah. providing. Right. Um, what we would do is not really a regular cash regular cash. We do certify eight or nine restaurants, but most of what we do all day is really really service oriented. Answering questions, helping people out, people out in certain situations. You, uh, I'll tell you one thing, Rabbi. That w w one thing that is a difference between in America. Here, here, if you have a question, if a restaurant is under the star K, or under the Chaf K, or under the OU, you can go to the website and you can see right away whether it is or it isn't. The a yeah, but, but that's I, not always it's not always updated though. Sometimes. Well, okay. But yeah, you're um, right. Most of the more, time, more or, less, more, yes, or less, more or less. Our, our yeah. website is updated. <laughs> yeah. So, all the time. No. Okay. I think so, so. I don't know. What? So, but you can, I, I don't you can, go. I don't go on the web. You can get, <laughs> you can get an updated kosher letter. You can see if it's expired or not. But, um, but, uh, but you, the badats and they, they don't have websites as far as I can see. So that means you have to call somebody to find out what the story is. That's right. one problem that that I have. And the other problem is sometimes you go into a. Let's say I've been in, a, let's say, Gula, right? And there's a big sign that has a Bedatz symbol, Bedatz Eid Haredis, which you showed before. Okay? And then you read it closely, and it's telling you, oh, it doesn't mean that the store is under the Bedatz, that the, the, the flavor in the Slurpee is bought from the Bedatz. The store, I don't know, has extra, doesn't have extra, it's somebody else. You know, you really need to, to, to know what you're looking at. I mean, that we would not allow something like that. You know, that, that's very confusing. It is a little bit of the wild, not they say the wild west. It's a little, it is a little bit of the wild east over here. Correct. I mean, people do make photocopies and put it up, and people think that it's actually a certificate. Um, so it, yeah, for the American, it, it, he has to get used to kind of giving before you walk. In other words, in America, you walk into rest, you see the certificate, it looks pretty original. You walk in here, and it's like you have to like kind of double, double take a double take before you. Uh, you know, we we have a, the restaurant spreadsheet on top of the spreadsheet. It says. Please double check that the certificate is is valid. Okay, um, let me just let me just let me just mention what you're talking about. You have you, you one of your services that people can get if they email the ZNT kosher at uh, gmail.com, they can get access to your spreadsheet of acceptable restaurants around the around Israel, right? That's correct, yes. Okay, those so those are, are usually under another hexer or your hexer. Correct. Right. We try to update it every month. For example, Ruben, you know, the only way for me to get their their spreadsheet, their list of restaurants, I have to get a fax machine. So, you know, the okay. only fax that we're talking about, you know. Uh, th <laughs> so, that, that's a problem because Rabbi Ruben has a lot of restaurants that he certifies and we accept him. And but where is the current information of where to go? You're sitting there on a Monday, Tuesday night in your in your shalim. You want to go to such a what hexer is it? And he doesn't. Okay, so there you go. The facts. So in other words, your spreadsheet has that information on it. We try to update it as, as much as we can. Okay, we, so everybody we, should know we, that they can right. they can email Rabbi Rabbi Farkas at ZNT Kosher at Gmail and get that get that spreadsheet. spreadsheet Very important. Correct. Do, do you? It's uh, also important. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. It's also important to note that besides us updating the spreadsheet, when consumers go out to, let's say, into Varian, they realize, you know, again, the, the cashless market is very, very volatile. In the morning, it could be hashkacha A, and then someone got into a fight, and then the afternoon, it's hashkacha B. <laughs> so I, I get, you know, I, so the really, consumers, <laughs> this doesn't happen in Baltimore, right? So <laughs> the consumers, sometimes they give me information. They send me a picture of a certificate. It's up. It's something wrong. So that's also very helpful for us because we can't be all over the country every day. You know, it's almost impossible. Do you but, do you provide uh, information to consumers looking to go grocery shopping, let's say? So that's really how this started. This card started because between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m., I would get a bunch of pictures of uh, people sending me pictures that look like this. Um, I bought this for dinner, or I would get a picture of uh, a plate of pasta with sauce on it and the, the can next to it saying, uh, I already did it. I already made it. Is it okay? So... Uh, yeah. This basically, people people just have to go into the store. Again, there are many, many other products that I research. I have connections with Mashkichim in Thailand. There's a many, many Far East products here in Eretz Israel. I have a connection with Mashkichim in Belgium, in England, products made in Italy, uh, much more than, in, in, than in, I, I feel in America, uh, much more different types of products. So I do research a lot of those products, you know, Vietnam. So based on that, people do send me, but it's not a, I can't give a response within five minutes. Sometimes I'm not always available, but, but this is the baseline plus other products. Right. So the, 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 the ones that are not on your card, there are other, let's, let me just point out, there are others that are acceptable. Um, you know, you're getting more into gray areas and things like that, which we, we can't discuss, but there are, you know, there are other places that a person could eat that would be acceptable but you know that's your you know, you know your your baseline you're talking about products or restaurants both so products is basically yes there there are let's say hashkachas that i would i would say it depends on the product uh with restaurants listen sometimes it depends on the situation if someone's parents are taking them to a specific place i can try to nap direct them within that place um, we've made connections with uh, with met the, the people that run the Ashkacha in cities like Netanya and Tzfas, which they're Rabbanu Mahadrins. Bedatz has something, the Tzfas has something called Bedatz Tzfas, and Netanya has something called Mahadrin and Mahadrin Netanya. Um, Mahadrin and, Minna and Mahadrin. The, yeah, well, Mahadrin is, yeah. <laughs> well, in Yushalayim, they also have three levels. It's called Rabban, regular Rabbanu. Used to be two levels, Rabbanut and Rabbanut Mahadran, and then people were getting, then they open a third level in the middle called Mahuderet. Okay. It's like buying an Esrig, you know, Aleph, 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 Aleph. Aleph. <laughs> um, and then people re then people realize you're getting confused between Mahuderet and Mahad The Israelis were getting confused between Mahuderet and and Mahadran. And Mahadran. So they called it Mahadran Mina Mahadran. <laughs> so it's, it, and these things constantly change. So we're in the process of, you know, making connections in different cities that, you know, I get a lot of questions, Herzliya, Netanya, Tel Aviv, you know, it's, it's complicated, especially because of Shemitah, but just, um, and um, that's our goal to make, get people at least two Melchik and two Flashic places in every city that you, you can go and you can feel comfortable. That, and enjoy that's your great. Vacation. Oh, that would, that yeah. would be great. So this is, this is that we've been Masliach in many cities because wow. you, you'd be surprised when we, when we tell Israeli Mashgichim or the chief rabbi of Netanyahu, we told him what we did. He was like, what do you mean? You, you're not making money off this? You're not, uh, <laughs> what's what's under the, what's under the, you know, what, what's going on here? So I said, no, we're here to service our community. And Baruch Hashem, we've been very much liya because Barina really, the Shem Shemaim, you know, he's really spearheaded this really with Kavan and the Shem Shemaim. And we have had a lot of, a lot of siyat the Shemaim, Baruch Hashem. That's a great, it's a great, I mean, we get these calls also, but obviously we're not on, you on know, the ground, on the ground right. you know, like you are. And you, you we can like switch. You guys can come here to the bunker <laughs> and I'll come to the palatial uh, offices if you guys. <laughs> anytime, man, anytime. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you a few uh, pointed questions, Rabbi Farkas. Um, so you go into a restaurant or you call the mashkiach on the phone and you talk to him and he tells you, this is bedaz, this is good. Is that enough? Is it me or, me or the consumer? Well, let's take both. Okay. Okay, you start. Go for it. Okay. No, I mean, so that's what you do, right? You go into a restaurant, you talk to the mashkiach. But, but I really mean the consumer. The consumer is going to call okay. the mashkiach on the phone. The mashkiach is going to tell him. But by the way, the mashkiach is usually, his number is on the tu'udah. In America, you don't have that. 
That's a, that is a, a difference. That's better. The and, the mifak, and, mifakir, and the mashiach and the supervisor. Are usually right. both you can on, call on them the on their cell phone. Right. Not only between two and three. <laughs> <laughs> so so they tell you this is Mahadran, this is Badat, this is Shairis, everything's good. So what is, is that enough? So listen, generally the mashgichim, you have to understand, in some of the hotels that we work together, I try to get these, de- these details of hashkachas. But the bottom line is he's working for, let's call it, Rabudut Mahajan. His answer to you many times will be everything is Mahajan. Now, Mahajan is a very generic term. And in every city, the Rabbanim of the city decide what's categorized as Mahajan. So when you go to a different city, every city, one's Mahajan will allow, uh, I don't want to say, let's say one Mahajan will allow tier three products, one Mahajan will allow tier two products. So if you, yes, if you theoretically, if you get a detailed um, you know, list from the Mashkiach, or Mashkiach says we only used these four hashkachas the marshal. So th- again, kashas is about the ingredients and how you process it. So if we're talking about a falafel shop, and again, shmita is a different. So let's say not in the year of shmita. If you're talking about a falafel shop, and the Mashkiach tells you that he's only using these four hashkachas, and you see a Jewish guy behind the counter, theoretically that would be that would consider that safe. The question is, would you do that, Rebbe in America? You go to Wichita, Kansas, and uh, you call the Chabad guy, and he tells you that you only use only Star K products, of course, right? Well, and so would, hungry, would, yeah. would you be comfortable yeah, so, without without a certificate eating in that falafel shop? It depends. You don't know, have a to answer the question. Shop, a falafel shop. You can send shop. me a WhatsApp. <laughs> I don't think a falafel shop is is is, is as serious as a as a Fleischig restaurant, let's say, or something like that. No, so well, that's what we, 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 we do. Falafel and pizza. There's fast food. There's sit down. So my, I'm asking, in America, would an American consumer feel comfortable doing this homework on his own would he, and, and eat there? Yeah, I don't think so. To, I think People go to Starbucks here and and, uh, and everything else. So, Well, you know, we, we, uh, just, just to backtrack a second, we do rely on many Chabad uh, houses just without any, um, you know. We, we, Nothing we, Chabad. We, I'm just saying in general. Right, we work, anything, if I know you're just trying to give an example of somebody. Right. The Chabad is right. all over. So that's, what, that's all you meant. You didn't mean, but we do work well with them and we do rely on them, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, as, as that. But No, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm saying, so, would you, so what your answer is it, it, that it, it's really not enough to talk to the mashkiach because what he tells you is a lot of times not exactly, you know, uh, locked in, 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 you know, it's not locked it's not in uniform. Down. It's not uniform it, from it, place it, to place. It could, be, it could be. It could be. If a mashkiach tells you in a falafel shop that they use only for ashkachas, I would say that's safe. Not not during the year of Shemitah. Um, yes. Okay, but, but if we're talking about like a virus at a fishing place, then that's a little okay, bit more complicated. I, I mean, people are writing about the bugs. Okay, I understand the bugs. Okay, so that's you're right, in a but um, well, okay, there's one more okay, thing I wanted to ask you, Rob, before I get to the, the to the chats. Um, what about hotel breakfast? This is a big deal. Okay, a lot of a lot of uh, our listeners and a lot of um, uh, Americans they go to the Israeli hotels, and the, you know, breakfast is included. With Israeli the Israeli breakfast, what Israeli breakfast is supposed to be a big deal. Israeli breakfast is included. It's a whole spread. You could eat their breakfast, right. lunch, and you know almost supper. Right. So, right. so, so they it's included with it, and they want to be able to eat there. You know, for the for the night, they understand for meat, they're going to go somewhere else. They go to a place, one of those hashkachas that you showed us. But for breakfast, it's it's important that they be able to eat in that hotel. What should they do? They should contact us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and what would you tell them? Okay, so basically, <clears throat> you have to understand. Um, let's talk about your shalim, for example. Okay, the difference between Rabbanu Mahajan and Rabbanut is Rabbanu Mahajan is Makbed on Bishop Beis Yosef. Should, should I explain what that is? It means a Jew has to be cooking. Yeah, doing the actual right. cooking. Okay. The regular yeah. Rabbanut um, relies on Bishul Rama, which generally most Hashkach. But in America, you'll rely on Bishul Rama in conjunction with. A mashgiach, right? Making sure that just in case fire, you know, if you have a, a hotel with omelet stations, you have mashgichim stationed at the omelet station, make sure the fires don't go out. Now, in right. a lot of these hotels, they don't have, I mean, I've done Pesach programs with uh, sometimes, you know, two head mashgichim, 22 mashgichim, two boy dick to lime. It's a serious, you know, operation. Here in most of the hotels, you'll have one or two mashgichim monitoring, you know, on a Wednesday already, they're cooking breakfast, they're cooking dinner. They're ready preparing for Shabbos, a lot going on. 
So it really depends. If it's Rabbanu Mahajan restaurant, so again, Kasha is about the ingredients and how you process it. Just the Bishal, Bishal Yisrael part of it has to be make sure that it's taken care of. Now, regarding the, the ingredients, what we Rabbanu realize isn't there less of, less of an issue for as far as Bishal Yisrael? Well, considering in Yishalayim, that most of the we're very are close, we're very cl- well in Yishalayim, the cheaper labor is is Arabs, you know, Arabs basically. Right. Um, it's possible, yes, that if you have somewhere in, uh, let's say, Haifa, you know, you never really know. That's the truth because there are, you know, Jerusalem and different cities and stuff like that. But, um, but so we, we realized that, I mean, we're getting a lot of questions about hotels. So what we did was we tried to go into some hotels and it's literally a five-year project of building up a relationship, you know, at, you know, let us into the, to the kitchens. We just want to see. So basically what I do is we go in every, you know, once in a while, we go into these hotels that we have a working relationship and we discuss products and Baruch Hashem, even in some hotels, we are matzliach to switch some products that come with a quote unquote mahajan ashkacha. But based on my research, they, you know, they wouldn't be considered mahajan in America. And um, so if they, so if consumers are going to the, one of these hotels with this breakfast, they could contact you and ask you what's the latest on the breakfast in that hotel. What can I eat with a, with a reasonably, you know, high level of, of comfort and um, right. And that, that, that that's or, very helpful. Or what I can do is I can try to break the ice with the mashkir. Cause a lot of times the mashkir, like I said before, he'll tell you everything's Robert Mahajan, but that's not what you're asking. You're asking a little bit, a little more detailed. So if, mm-hmm. if, you know, because they know me, some, a lot of these mashkir so when I say that I'm sent, like I sent someone to Tveria, Tveria this week, they actually come back from Tveria now. They went to a place that has regular Rabbanut and had the Mechira. So, you know, so what are you going to eat? So basically, I spoke to the Mashkir for a while, and um, they said, you know what? Send them to me. Tell them that my Shafarka sent you, and uh, I'm going to take them for a little tour of, you know. So basically, what they ate was, was like a lot of the the pastries, the, the power of pastry, the breads and the power of pastries. Some of the cold cheeses, the basically the cottage cheese, you know, that comes in a bag, you know, five kilo bag. It's like, you know, you carry it on your back. They mm-hmm. take out the cottage cheese out of a bag, put it in a bowl. Um, basically, a lot of the cold, well, cold, the cold unprocessed things. Well, well, I, I, cold I just unprocessed. want to say, and my, I'm, I'm, uh, what I want to point out is because they use the het mechira, which we don't have time really to go into the whole story, right. but a lot of our listeners know what that is anyway, about Shemitah, that the whole land of Israel is sold. So their, their pots and pans that they use um, become a problem if they cook vegetables in them, and then they cook something that has a good hechshir, we would not be uh, comfortable with, with that. So even if you know that right now they're cooking for you, let's say eggs in a pan that they cooked some some vegetables in, we have a problem with that, correct? That's exactly the question I got at 9.17 a.m. The lady asked me, can I have <laughs> eggs? What could be wrong with I just want of scrambled eggs? I, right. I want someone to make it for me. So I, I said one thing. I, the answer was Kalim. That's it. Right. Like exactly. Utensils, you, pointed, right. you pointed utensils. You don't know what right. was in there before. Okay. Right. Let me just take some of these chats so we can, we can, um, let's see, some questions. Okay. Kashris in a house rental. That's not really applicable right now. Maybe when we have on Rabbi Tendler. Okay. The two places per city list that you mentioned before. Where do you, I don't have that. I don't have that yet. The spreadsheet has a lot of cities all over at Estrell, and we're in the process of. Oh, you're trying to, you're trying to get to. We have to 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 Spas, Netanya. Herzliya had a place till a month ago that was uh, that was land debt, which would be tier one. So currently, you know, I send people to two other places under a tier two ashgach in conjunction with speaking to the mashgiach, who, who right. both of them are, that I know. But again, people have to know where they feel comfortable. If someone calls me and says, "Okay, where do you want to eat?" So I tell them to this. I send them to this restaurant, speak to the mashgiach. But if someone says, "I only want to eat Aid and Ruben only," so I said, "But you're in Herzliya. There isn't only Aid and Ruben. It doesn't exist." Maybe in the supermarket you'll get yourself a little ices, you know. But it just people have to know where they're holding. I can't tell people where I can give people information. I can't make decisions for them. Right. Uh, let me just people are in situations, your, they should contact their rub to see how to deal with that specific. Let situation. me just mention yeah. your uh, your email again, Rabbi. It's uh, Z N T Kosher at gmail.com or ZNT Kosher.com. It's a very uh, basic website, but in the process. ZNTKosher.com. What's that? Z-N-T-Kosher. You wrote it in the chat. I wrote it before, but someone else is asking. They didn't see it before. Okay. okay some of the chats I see are about particular hashgachas, and we don't really, uh, it's not really the place for it. 
but yes, there are there are you know other places perhaps you could eat, and uh, you know you could be in touch about those uh, those 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 places. Let me see if there's anything else here that we wanted to to mention, Rabbi Rabbi. You're, one of the questions about the Milchik restaurant. That's an interesting. Oh yeah. Question. So is Milchik? Is it true? Here's the question we got emailed. Is it true that when it comes to Milchik restaurants in Israel, one can be lenient? In other words, there are almost no issues in a Milchik restaurant to watch out for. That was the question we got. So in a Milchik restaurant, I actually think a Fleischer restaurant might be a little bit easier because essentially a steak place. I'm not assuming that the mashkiach is on top of the the meat, but ah, I'm talking okay. right. But uh, but. Uh, I'm talking about ingredients, ingredient wise. A fleshic place is essentially meat and potatoes. Okay. Okay. Now, milchic place, uh, you have a lot of salads. So, when a lot of times you'll call the restaurant, you'll ask them, Where do you get your leafy stuff? They say it's gush katif. Gush katif basically means it's greenhouse grown. Right. And you can ask Rabbi Tendler in a couple minutes what greenhouse grown means. Sometimes uh, they come with a lot of different levels. And even in the better hashkachas, even if you get leafy stuff with the better hashkachas, the, the organizations only take responsibility if you wash it properly. So if you deal with a place, let's say there's a one place that makes their, what they do, they sell salads. In, uh, in our in our cafe, we wash, let's say, three cases a day. In that place, they probably wash 20 cases of lettuce a day. So it, it has, someone has to be on top of it that the, the lettuce, the leafy stuff is being washed properly. That's A. So wait, 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 let me just repeat that. That's very important because a lot of times you call the mashkiach in in the in the in the, in the Israeli and he'll say it's gush katif. He'll say it's gush katif, not... gush katif. Everything is gush katif. So what you're saying is that's not enough because the gush katif has a rule that that you need. The the, the says well, gush katif is, is it means greenhouse I mean, grown. Gush is a is a general term, but the but the right. particular hechsher has a requirement that you wash the lettuce before you use it to get rid of you know bugs that might 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 still be there. Are, are like, there... like for example, in our cafe when we first started, so we had one of the chefs, and he was a chef in one of the bigger hotels, and he said, "I'm going to wash the lettuce." So I said, "Let me see." He opened the bag, took the whole head of lettuce, dunked it in water, and started chopping it. <laughs> you, ba- you essentially all you did is you, get, you gave it. You, you didn't do anything, you know. You That's have to separate the leaves. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. He was table it, yeah. Um, so it's impo- that's a very important akuda because gush katif is being thrown around a lot. That 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 because. You know, they people feel like that'll, you know, answer all questions. And the next akuda really by milchik restaurant is uh, a lot of the cheese products. Um, those a lot of those products are coming from cheese all over the world. You know, cheese is a very highly sensitive. You know, there's a big production from the from the milking to the production to the rennet v'chulu v'chulu. So, um, based on our research, not all those cheese products would be considered as called tier one. So. And then we are talking about the sauces and stuff, but basically the leafy oh, stuff and the cheese. The answer to, to, to the question, can is it true that a milchik restaurant, you can just be lean? And the answer is N-O, right? <laughs> no. Or low, or low, lam and olive. <laughs> lam and olive, right. Uh, R- Ruchama is asking, what is the benefit of gush katif if, if it doesn't help you, if you need to wash it? Oh, it's, anyway. better, than, it's better than not gush katif. Well, well, a lot of the times, they uh, for the better hashkachas, they're left with flies. Um, it's it's greenhouse grown. Listen, not there's no perfect science. You can ask Rabbi Tendler. There's no perfect science for uh, getting rid of the bugs. You know, they have. You know, basically they do a run, and after they take it to the lab, and if it passes the, whatever the different requirements, then then it's fine. Otherwise, it goes to the other hashkachas. You know, it, it goes down the chain of command or whatever chain of you know. So you don't really know where it's holding um, when it gets to you, and also it has to be washed properly. Even if it does pass the would it would it be Kadai Rib Tzvi to just uh, chazer over um, the whole the whole Rabbanut situation and how that works or is that too um, big? Well, a, we have we have a particular question here. Richard is asking. Right. Just, well, that's what uh, I'm asking. Rabbi Fox uh, say that the Rabbanut Hechsher is not as strict with Bishul Akum as the Mahadrin Hechsher. What, what, what I said, said was what I, no, I didn't know what I what I what I said was is that in America generally. I don't know. Tell me if this is true. I think a lot of the shkachas are 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 okay with bishul rama. Is that right. correct, Rabbi? Yes. Really, yes. Okay, yes. correct. Yes. Now, good. given that in Eretz Yisrael the culture is different, which means that there's many many sfardim in Eretz Yisrael. So the Rabbanu Mahadrin and I believe also the Star K when they were here in Eretz Yisrael, they were makben a bishul beis right. just right. because we're catering to a different clientele. That that's what all I said. But both of those would, would work. But again, the Robert Mahajan has to be mocked on that because they're catering to the general 
populace, which is, includes many, many Sephardi. Okay, very good. Um, we do have some more questions, but uh, I think our time is run out. We want to, um, I guess it, 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 it is um, a daunting topic, you know, to discuss Kashrus in, in, in Eretz Yisrael. Can, we, and, um, can I just ask a quick question sure. about um, of course. Uh, leaving, when you're flying out of Eretz Yisrael, so do you have anything to say about the what's what's um, the food on the airline? Listen, I, get, I get many questions about the lounge because every Jewish guy has a priority pass. <laughs> um, and if you don't, you should get Not one quick. One. Every Goldberg's got one, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll, add you on, I'll add you on. I'll add you on. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, Tendler has, it's, has it's, several. It's, it's, it's again, yeah. it's again the Nakuda that I was saying. It's a game of supply and demand. Um, if there's not enough of demand, in other words, uh, which uh, Hasidish guy has complained that he can't have the salad? He's just gonna have the, the coke and the crackers in, in the lounge, you know. But on the plane, also, um, one of the questions I think Rabbi Goldberg was was about the vegan meals. You have to understand yes, that right. the ovens, ovens on in the plane, don't have ashkacha, right? You don't know what's been in that oven. The regular oven, we can, we can talk about Zay and different things in ovens. Right. The and vegan meals would definitely not be acceptable. That's there's no would not be acceptable. Not recommend that. Right. I have the number of the Mashkiach of Allah, but you have to understand he's working for a big organization that's catering to right. a wider clientele. In America, what you were saying about what you were saying about the lounge, I think Rabbi was actually asking about the plane, but the, going back to the, the lounge, plane, right? really, yes. I'm saying the, both. I'm saying both. The, the lounge is you're, what you're saying is regular Rabbanut, which is uh, you know, which the Al La lounge, lounge might be a little bit better, but I don't have access to that. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the the regular Dan lounge, which everyone basically goes to, is uh, basically regular Rabbanut, correct? Right. So that's uh, that's the issue. Okay, I want to thank you very much. Uh, we could, I think, talk to you for another hour or two. But um, we'll let you get. I know you have those calls coming in, Rabbi. <laughs> right, the pasta you know? sauce with the pine. Right, you did. You did mention to me that you would uh, appreciate if people would call you not from the restaurant while they're sitting down to eat, but an advance notice. You know, so you could guide them and not, uh, not, uh, not, not be put on the spot like that. It, it's very important, Nakuda. I think just like people reserve. Uh, rental cars and reserve hotels and reserve tours at the chocolate factory. Um, I think it's also very important to kind of map out a little bit. Again, I don't think, again, when people come there to sell generally, it's either to, to visit a child or to go on a tour, or, you know, it's, you have to understand, you have to kind of, you know, you're on vacation, but you have to be a little responsible about it. This is just traveling anywhere. It's, it's very important. When you go to Panama or you go to South America, you want to make sure that you have the restaurants lined up. Right. Um, I think it's very important to try to do that in as much as you can. But again, people, you know, people try their best. But uh, we're here. To All right. Well, thank you very much, Anish Keep no, up the good work. Thank you so much. We, we, you thank know, you. We, we're behind you. you. We support you, and we wish you a lot of hatslacha. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Have a good Shabbos. Take care. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Terrific. Hi. Just you and me, huh? Uh, well, we have Rabbi Tendler. Hold on a second. Let me get um, let me get Rabbi Tendler on. We're going to talk now. We we'll move to the United States. The 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 the, uh, the situation in America. Hold on a second. Okay, let's wait for Rabbi Tendler to come on. And where is he? Um, he sounds like he's outside. I think he's in his office. Are you in your office? You know, this is not a fake background. I actually ended up having a meeting. You're at in a safari. The, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have a, an event at the Marriott Waterfront in a couple of weeks. So I can't, they, they called last minute. They said the only time they can meet is today. So uh, I figured what better place to have a talk about a travel webinar than, you know, at the Waterfront Marriott downtown with the harbor All in the right. background. You there, know, you there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Watch out for the squeegee, guys. <laughs> Well, okay. if you're going to travel, we're not here necessarily to recommend you travel to Baltimore, right? We're not going to go <laughs> hey, there. Hey, 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 watch it there. Why do you think I leave so often? You know that. <laughs> okay, Rabbi Tendler. So um, I want to just introduce you for a second that uh, uh, Rabbi Tendler is is our food service director in Baltimore. And he runs the restaurants, hotels, caterers. And um, as well, he has many facilities across the United States and therefore does a fair amount of travel. I won't ask you how many miles you have this year, Rabbi Tell me, we'll put you on the spot. But um, <laughs> I know that United knows you by your first name already. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, that's not the point. As long as they pick up the phone when I call. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So we have a lot to talk about when traveling locally in the United States. Um, you know, it's not necessarily going to be kosher food where where you are where you are traveling to. Uh, so you must right. You must be adept at bringing food with you or or figuring out how to find food in the places where you go. Just before you answer that, I just want to say we got an email that we must mention that Trader Joe's across the United States is the go-to for some people when you're looking for like kosher items. They have a very good selection of of kosher products um that you wouldn't find elsewhere but that's really true about almost every supermarket right i mean if you go to a safeway or a, a walmart what a right. walmart, a little walmart. Right. you can find ou right. star k products in all these places right. so you're not going right. to so stop I, I have, I mean, that's that's true so rule number one is like as ray farkas actually mentioned before you know you could do a little planning ahead if you did enough research to book your plane ticket um you could probably figure out a little bit what to do about food now sometimes you don't have a choice you're going for a few weeks to a place where you know, you're renting some Airbnb, Airbnb somewhere and, you know, who knows what you hope it's filled. You know, generally speaking, you're going to bring food with you. Um, cooler bags, things like that are obviously the way to go. If you don't, like, for example, <laughs> last week I happened to have gone to, um, I was somewhere in Miller, Indiana. I had to go do an inspection. And so Indianapolis does have a firm community, but I wasn't going to be in enough time to go anywhere. And 10 o'clock the night before my flight, uh, my wife says to me, what are you doing about food? And I was like, you know. I forgot about that. I didn't. Even, I, I com completely forgot. I had a very busy day. Um, uh, someone's saying they don't see or hear me. Um, is there any issues? Um, well, as long as some people can, if we can just have some people chat. Do you hear Rabbi Tendler and see him? Then we can assume that it's okay. Okay. If if, if some people are hearing you, then it means that it's getting out there, and the problem is on the other side. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank anyway, you. so I completely forgot. I forgot to pick up any food. It was only one day, but still a day. I wasn't planning on fasting the whole day. So there, there are so many options in the United States for sure. As you mentioned, any, any supermarket um, is going to have the estimate anyways is between 60-70% of the items, items are kosher, whether it's Quaker oatmeal, granola bars, cereals, um, instant Six, mashed potatoes. 60-70%? Yeah, Wait, really? Anymore. Have a hefsher. Yeah, something like that. I can believe have it. A, have a good and, hefsher? And, and, and in health food stores, like 80-90%. Maybe not necessarily all of them have a good hefsher. But yes, have, I remember my father. My father, Oliver Shalom, used to try, in, in, in his briefcase. My father was a uh, real estate appraiser, so he used to travel around a lot. And in his briefcase, he used to keep a can opener, um, uh -huh. because now you know, pop up. It, yeah, we don't have pop ups. And back then, they didn't have pop ups. But yeah, that's what he would do. You know, you go get a can of tuna or something. So yeah, so I mean, you could tuna maybe you can't necessarily find, but. Power of item cereal, instant rice, the Minsley Starcase certified Minsley rice and quinoa meals, ready cooked, ready to eat are available in all the supermarkets. So you will not starve. It might not necessarily be your first choice of prime rib and you know hot, you know instant hot potatoes or something like that. But you, there's going to be plenty of food no matter where you go. Um, as you mentioned, Trader Joe's, and I'll also mention Costco in particular. In many many cities, have selections of harder to get kosher items, whether it be cheeses, meats. Or, or things like that. I was once in doing an inspection, actually a vegetable inspection in the middle of New Mexico. And um, I went into a random, I had to fly into, I forgot, I think I flew into El Paso. So they're also, I don't remember why I didn't bring food or I was just traveling from city. It was a bunch of a long trip, a whole week trip. So I couldn't bring enough food. A random Costco in the middle of El Paso, Texas had, you know, had, you know, the regular Jewish brands of deli meats and coleslaws that you find all in all the Costco's around here. Um, you know, I don't know how big the community is in El Paso, but, you know, these are things in the United States you can generally find and get by um, pretty much anywhere in the country. Um, um, you know, uh, Julie even says, in if, the you airport, if, Julie says if, you, if you keep Yashin, you could really starve in some areas. <laughs> um, so rice is not going to be a problem of Yashin. Cer wheat cereal is generally not going to be a problem of Yashin. Um, you can't. So, you know, rice you have to so cook. This, so. this, or you can just no, no, travel from, from the, only travel from. I mean, rice cakes, you can get rice cakes, I guess. Rice cakes, but also the I said mentioned before the star came Minsley meals, which come ready to cooked, you know, ready to eat. Um, I was not gonna be a problem with Yashan. Um, uh, personally, I am not in Yashan and I have traveled quite considerably. So, again, you might not get your first choice of all the different items and cookies that you crackers that you're looking for, but you, you will not starve. So, um, that's, how you keep your, that's how you keep your, your figure, huh? That's how you keep your weight down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, listen, you, we, we, you know, we can, you can come biking with me or I go over it. Once yeah. in a while. <laughs>
Okay. Um, so let, 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 I just want to mention that we have a fair amount of travel articles on our website. Uh, Rebbe Heber has written articles about uh, Tfilas HaDerech and about flying on a plane and davening on a plane. And um, I have some articles about hotels and about cruises, uh, which I've never been on. But <laughs> but we have we have a fair amount of articles that people... We, I think we have a section called Travel that you could see all of those. And we recommend that you take a look at those before you uh, you, you head out. Um, I just, just to just out of the blue, Rabbi Tenner, since I mentioned davening, you have you have some ideas about where you where you should daven when you travel, right? On in, in the airports and so what so what my goal was referring to is I, I made notes for myself when I started traveling about all the different airports where the best spots are to daven, whether it's empty gates, specific phone, phone booths, like they used to, many airports still have like banks of phone booths, which obviously nobody uses anymore, but some of them they're still there. Um, whether it's lounges or clubs or even places where you're not, as Ray Barrio would say, Zaycha to the privilege of having a lounge pass. Uh, many airports have business centers which are available to all flyers, even if you're not one of the frequent flyers or have lounge passes. And generally, those are quieter areas with a desk and a little bit of a cubicle type of a situation. And, the, you know, I made notes in many different airports of where the best places are to daven. You know, generally speaking, you can always find a quiet spot or a quiet gate, unless you're talking like smack in the middle of the day, in the middle of one of the big hubs, Newark, JFK or something, maybe it's a little harder. But generally speaking, you can always find a spot. Uh, I'll also mention that I've had this experience twice already. Where I'm walking through an airport, I was this last happened to me. I was in Dulles. Um, I don't remember where I was going anymore. Um, I was going, walking through Dulles, the middle of the afternoon. It was a full deck of flights going out. United in Dulles is a United hub, and I'm walking through the terminal. And you see on this side, just literally, there's like a little like ledge in the terminal wall. Right there, there was a Muslim guy with his mat spread out and you know doing his thing. And you're like, you know, in the middle of a busy terminal, he doesn't care. So, you know, someone once told me a, a, a line also is that a Hasidic guy in L.A., he said there's two places he's not embarrassed to walk around in his strimal and full, you know, Hasidic, Bekish and everything like that. In the middle of Williamsburg, where everybody walks around like that. And in the middle of L.A., he says, no, in L.A., no, no, I'm a sugar and a gate and gas. You know what I mean? You're, you're, not, you're not any crazier than the next guy out there in this day and age. So you want to pop yourself down by a gate, put on your towels and fill and start davening. So start davening. So they think you're crazy. They think you're crazy. Guess what? You know what it means? It means no one's going to sit next to you on the plane. That's not necessarily a concern. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Um, let me, let's take some of these questions. I see they're asking, but in a hotel, how do you, if you want to heat up your food uh, in the microwave, what do you? Uh, so there's, there's a few recommend? options. First one, you could double wrap. Um, that's obviously the easiest option, probably the best option. Take any two bags. You have, you know, uh, you could take the, the, the bag that they give you in the, for the ice, for the ice bucket and a clean garbage bag or something, double wrap your food, stick it on the microwave, and that's probably the best eight that you have. The other thing is that they do sell on Amazon now these plug-in, they look like a little lunchbox, the size of a small pan, and they have bigger ones the size of a 9 by 13 pan that you can plug in, and in about half hour, it heats up your food. It's basically a traveling hot plate. It's They say it's completely safe to use. What's um, it called? Right right there? What's that called? Um, I don't know what exactly what it's called. I literally just learned about this recently. Beaker Holm here bought a bunch of them for people who are in hospitals to use. Um, it, it's something uh, it, that I, I'm planning on getting one because it's something that I can imagine being very, very helpful when you're traveling. So that's obviously another way you can heat up food. Um, that's cool. Now, the other, the other thing, um, there was a, someone had a question that I just noticed before that was a, an interesting question. Um, oh, a, a Atlanta said it has a prayer room chapel. That, that's a, a discussion whether you have multi denominational right. prayer rooms or chapels, right. whether you're allowed to go in there and dive well, in because it's not really. Jewish room, it's also used for all the religions. A lot of times there's nothing uh, there on the walls that's that's really objectionable. It's just an empty that's room. That's what the Rav says. I remember we discussed with I'm not Rav sure. Times, I don't know. Um, I, I never bother with them because um, I go into the club. But uh, <laughs> you know, I was once on an army base, and on army bases, a lot of times they, they their chapels are like universal. So like they have like a big cross, and then they like flip it around, and there's like a big you know mug and dove it or something. It's like so the Daisy I don't know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna actually. I found what you're talking about, Rabbi Rabbi Tendler. While you're talking, it's called Hot Logic. So I'm gonna Hot put Logic. Up yes, that, that's right. That's right. I'm putting up this link. It looks like a long link for just that one item, but some somehow that's what Google that's what Google gave me. But if you click that, you should get to the um, to that little warmer you're talking about that you can heat up the food. Um, and you said what did you say? Like 45 minutes. Less and less than that. I forgot what they say. It gets up to, I think, 165, 170 degrees. So it really makes your food, you know, really considerably hot. 
It really Does works. Does it cook? It cooks or it just heats it up? At that temperature, it could cook technically. It would take a little longer to cook, but no. to reheat meals for sure. Um, whether you bring their own or you bring those Maspia or the Meal Mart packaged meals that, you know, that are shelf stable, which I have. I traveled to Korea once for a whole week with those meals and, uh, you know, I didn't lose that much weight from them. That I could tell you. You're talking about these uh, these kind of meals. Lab, well, mm -hmm. Labrador, those have a heating element where they self heat up themselves. Um, right. Besides those, it's actually the same company. Meal Mart makes the meals that you just have, have to either pop in a microwave, and they come already double sealed. Oh, so I those see. Are okay. a good option as well. Mm -hmm. It's called it's okay. called Hot Logic. You show, someone it, someone yeah. brought saw that in the office, I think, right? Robert Tellen brought it in. Oh, it was like a shower for Shabbos. Yeah, I brought it. I showed it to the Yeah. That was right. one right. of the we, poems, um, once. we discussed how you could use how you could use that for Shabbos. We're not going to get into that right. now, but there is a way. We did come out with a way how to right. how to it, use it. It does it not need to be toilet because your food's not actually touching. It's just used as a heating apparatus. And mm -hmm. you need one for milk and flesh chicks. Yes, it's. I mean, it's an oven. So as long as your food is wrapped properly, um, then you should be okay. But again, it's it, it's exactly like an oven for Hilchas weekday and Hilchas Shabbos. So keep that in mind as well. That's cool. Chani's yeah. asking, do you need one for milk and flesh I think the answer. So I said, what, so it, I mean, again, you know, if it would it's be like closed, a, like the same thing, like an oven, exactly like it an oven. It sounds like a toaster oven, more, more like a toaster oven, no? I, 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 I think it would be a good idea because things get, things probably spill. It's definitely a good idea. So, again, if, if you're careful that nothing spills, then, you know, you could talk about it. But otherwise, again, treat it like an oven, like Ari Breyer saying, a small toaster oven. Treat it exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other tips? Anything else that you, that you would, uh, that you want to talk about, Rabbi, Rabbi Tendler? Um, how about when I go into a local? How do I know wh whether or not if I'm going far away? How do I know if the restaurant is under a good hechsher or not? And you could call so the Star you call K. Call the Star K, and then they give you the famous <laughs> won't no give information you an answer. answer. All right, it's a no an information answer. answer. All right, we never heard of them. We don't want to say. You know, no, all kinds we'll, of funny we'll tell you we don't comment on local uh, local places. Right, that's right, that's right. We're always so helpful to the consumers. Um, anyways, <laughs> but there's a very simple solution that I've done myself many times. Uh, many times when we say no information. Let's be honest. Sometimes we actually don't have information. You know, that, that happens sometimes. Um, so and so the, the, what I do is many times is you, go, you call up the restaurant and you go through a very simple routine. I think Ray Fargus mentioned something similar as far as talking to the mashkiach. Um, you call up and you ask, number one, can I speak to the mashkiach? So you see if they have a mashkiach or they don't. Now, in some out of town places, they don't necessarily have a mashkiach. That's a different question. But you're, law, you're talking about collecting information. You call and ask to speak to the mashkiach. So they say there's no mashkiach here. So who's in charge of kosher? And then after that, whoever answers the phone and you talk to, you'll decide what you want to do. But let's assume they have a mashkiach or somebody who's filling that role. He gets on the phone. You say, Shalom Leichem, are you the mashkiach? Yes. Who's Ashkach are you under? You'll get funny answers sometimes. Sometimes you thought it was one and it was a different one. And you could say, oh, I thought you were under that Ashkach. Let's say, oh, we switched last week. You know, I've had that happen to me. It's a good question to ask. Who's Ashkach are you under? Is everything in your restaurant Yashan and Pas Yisrael? Now, you may not care about Yashan. You may not care about Pas Yisrael, but any mashkiach should have an answer to that question, a, a quick answer to that question. You should know off the bat what everything is Yashan and Yisrael. And you should also know that Yashan and Yisrael are not the same thing, right? That's also something to know. <laughs> okay. So he says, everything Yashan and Yisrael, um, are you there all the time? You know, what do you do about vegetable checking? And which shkitas do you use? Any mashkiach, in, in any mashkiach who's, you know, who's doing his job properly should have instant answers to every single one of those questions. Now, he may say, when you ask him, let's say about the shechita, I have to go check. I'm only the afternoon mashkiach. The meat deliveries come in the morning. Okay, that's a valid answer. But by asking these five or six questions, you really can get yourself a picture of what's going on. I tell people the same thing. They're going to a hotel. They're going to a program. You know, Pesach, obviously, the list is a little bit longer. But, like, there's only so much we can tell you about hashkachas that are unknown to us. But this is a way you can do your own research. And based on the information you get, you make your decision if you're comfortable or if you're not comfortable. Um, I had myself an experience in one out-of-town place where I called up a restaurant, asked to speak to Mashkiach, meet Mashkiach. First of all, Mashkiach just went to the bathroom. It happens a lot. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Anyways, let's see. I got the Mashkiach on the phone. Meet Mashkiach, yes. Is everything Yashan and Pansitral? Yes, absolutely. I said, what about your Franks and Blanks? He said, everything's Yashan and Pansitral. I happen to know, even in Baltimore, it's very hard to get Yashan pastry dough. You know, this was like in March or something. So he didn't know the difference in Yashan and Pansitral. Okay, I'll give him that one. He said, which vegetables do you use? He's like, um, I don't know. We just wash them. Like, okay. I said, and which chita do you use? He's like, is that the meat? Oh, no. Like, uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, shkita generally refers to, I mean, it's not talking about, it's not talking about the pizza or the, or the you know, the, or the salads. So he said, yeah, I got to call the rabbi and get back to you. I said, don't bother. Same town, 
Same mashkacha. I called another restaurant. I asked, you know, can I speak to mashkiach? You know, mashkiach, yes. Which vegetables do you use? Bodek or whatever he said. We check him with shmatudik, whatever it was. Which chitas do you use? He said, well, what do you want to order? I was like, I don't know what's on the menu. He rattled off for me the entire menu, every item with what shchita it was. Now, it happens to be personally, I wasn't so comfortable with every shchita that I was on there, but I went to that restaurant and I chose the items that I was that I was comfortable with because I knew this guy has the place under control. Uh-huh. So that's a, a very simple solution. Do you, do you think you know, any to, consumer any consumer can do that? What you're what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Again, if you're willing, it, it, if you don't, it have has to be hashkocha that has a base level hashkocha that you you know. Right. Well, again, let's say I don't have any specific preference on shkita. Any national agency certifying a shkita is okay for me, which is a valid mahalach for consumers who don't know anything different than that, which is fine. We're not going into that, right? The bottom line is you want to see if there's a mashkia here who is competent. And if he has instant answers to all those questions, or, you know, he has intelligent answers, how about that, to all mm-hmm. these questions, you know you're dealing with someone who knows what he's doing. That's it. Just, and then you make your decision. I just know from personal experience growing up in an out-of-town place and then going back later, you know, now that I know more, uh, you know, it's it's always, it, a, lot of, a lot of times it's one thing. They, they have a roving mashkia. They don't have a full-time mashkia in many places. Not, uh, Again, you'll get this is a way to get information and then you make your decision. I'm not saying that any one particular answer is more acceptable than the other. Um, the other way to go on vacation is, which is sometimes a good idea for many reasons, is you go on vacation, as I say, with an open mind and eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then you do what you want and go where you want. Right. So. <laughs> OK. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, just let me get back to some of the, the, the questions here. Um, uh, hotel buff- buffets, waffle makers. Okay, so hotel, yeah. hotel buffets and hotels in general. Let's let's blast through hotels in, in 30 seconds or less over here. Okay, go ahead. Um, if someone's going to hotel, um, let's say you're going for a weekday, so we're only going to talk about the breakfast buffet. So let's talk about let's assume quality stroll is not a question for you, but if it is, then you have to deal with that. But let's say they're talking about a pile of cereals that they have, they're cold cereals, generally should be fine. If you have any concerns, you can ask to see the package. Um, you know, I don't know about you. This has nothing to do with working in the Star K, but I personally have a TSI in on real Cheerios versus off-brand Cheerios. Um, but you could definitely ask to see the box if you have any concerns about the even cereal. Even so, I mean, regular off- Cheerios. I mean, regular Cheerios, Tom, even, even off-brand, there are, there's really no shallows there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, they're, most of them are going to be kosher anyway, but I'm just right. saying I can look at it and say, okay, these are Cheerios, these are real Fruit Loops, and, uh, you know, real Cocoa Puffs or, you know, whatever else my kids eat. But most people have that kind of TSI. And that's I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I don't. I don't, can, I don't think I could tell by looking at them. I guess I don't eat enough Cheerios. All right, Barry, <laughs> you eat uh, peanut butter and jelly for breakfast, I guess, in your house. So maybe <laughs> I'll start true. coming to you. I'm sick of cereal. Anyway. The only thing um, I would tell uh, you that I could tell is when we discussed with Rabbi Heber, the difference between cornflakes that are made naturally and those that are ground up and reconstituted. Right, but that's, they look different. Hello, the different. There's anyway. a difference in the that's broth. That's question. not about the co- that's kosher. That's right, yeah. right. That's, a that's the only thing I could tell. Anyway, so Cheerios, uh, a lot of hotels also have almond or soy milk available because a lot of people have allergy concerns. So that's something also is a plus for consumers. Beyond that, other than if there's packaged cookies, cakes, muffins, or things that which come packaged with a hatcher on them, which most of them do, maybe not for all but most of them come packaged with a hatcher, those should be fine. There's very little else you're going to find at a hotel buffet that really, at the end of the day, we're going to be comfortable recommending. Not the waffle maker, not the oatmeal that they make themselves. Obviously, the packaged oatmeal will be okay. Um, the juice machines, if they're 100% juice, would be okay. Um, the eggs, obviously, are out. Um, the yogurts, generally, they're not having the kosher yogurts at the hotel. They have the, the Danon or other companies that only have the K, which contain gelatin in them. Um, so there's nothing else, really, from a hotel breakfast bar that we would feel comfortable recommending other than the cold cereal, the milk, if you're not going to call Israel, or soy milk, almond milk, and anything else that's packaged. Um, if they have bread there, um, you know, regular bread, you can ask to see the package. Chances are it's probably kosher, although not necessarily. And bread is something that absolutely needs hashkacha. Um, so let's assume the kosher bread is kosher. Then you can take the packages, if they have packages of cream cheese and the peanut butter and jelly that have a hashkacha and use those. The toasters are not good. Um, and the waffle maker is not good. Um, there's really nothing else at a hotel breakfast bar that you know, is worth discussing. Um, and, and the reason people ask why is because, first of all, there's so many other things that go on behind the scenes at a hotel, whether you think they're always using the same product or not necessarily using the same product. Waffle mixes definitely need a hashkacha because it has a brand name on it. doesn't mean they're always using that brand. Trust me, I've seen it. Okay, In food service, we've seen it all, as they say. And, and on top of that, anyone who's lived in a Bakram Dira, 
you know, you know what you can do with a waffle maker and with a toaster. <laughs> you know, you know what you can do with you can you can make a suda <laughs> from a waffle maker, right? So so we don't have to go there and, and discuss what other things could possibly happen. So therefore, it's not something that people we would recommend. Uh, Arthur is saying that, that that Moe's Danon has an OU. But that's not, that's not correct. correct. In, 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 that's in not correct. The you can check the label the easily. It'll say gelatin right. on the label if it has gelatin. Most Danon right. that you buy in your kosher supermarket has an OU. But the Danon right, right. that you buy elsewhere has just a K because of the yeah. gelatin inside there. You'll see the gelatin. Right. The You'll coffee say and vanilla, the plain coffee, the plain vanilla have a have, have an OU on them. The other ones do not. None of the other ones do, don't have. A, don't have. Um, now, the hard-boiled eggs in hotels are not okay. They're straight out bishalakum unless they come packaged with a hexer on them. Um, now, um, as far as staying for a hotel, staying in a, a coffee in hotels, co if it's plain coffee in hotels, it should be fine. Um, and the coffee makers in the room also generally should be okay as well. Um, now, if you're staying in a hotel for Shabbos, that's a whole other list of complications. You talk, and these we have articles about. You can look them up at the Conscious Currents website, plug, um, and that's well, as far as door access, um, automatic lights turning on, bathrooms having electronic flush and things like that. Those are all things that a, a, someone would have to you know, go walk through, so to speak, before Shabbos and be prepared for. Not saying there aren't ways necessarily to get around all of them, but that's something you'd have to do your own research on, in, depending on the hotel you're staying in. Um, okay, now... Okay, let me ask as, you one more thing, Robert. Robert, Robert let yeah. me take you one more place, Rabbi Tendler. Uh, meals on the plane, right? People are traveling. Um, what, uh, what's a meal on a plane? A meal on the plane. I haven't seen one of those. In well, that's true. Night. You only get it when you go to Eretz right? So that actually we should. They're, they're coming back in. They're coming back in. They're coming back. They in. are so, in America. So, yeah. Um, you know, for, well, so some flights. It's only at your level, up. I think, Rabbi Tendler. <laughs> your travel level, I think, maybe. Uh, so I mean, so look, look, look. Story... Going... One look. second, one second, one second. There's a story <laughs> with Mr. Zev Wolfson, the Colonel of Rafa, that he was someone once saw him flying, and he always, as you know, sat in economy class. That was, you know, he didn't spend an extra penny on anything like that. Someone came to him and said, Mr. Wilson, he said, how can we sing an economy class? It's like, why? There's a lower level? There's a cheaper <laughs> level? <laughs> um, okay, listen, you know, when it, if you travel a lot, it is something that's definitely beneficial. But the benefits that you get from traveling a lot are the, the airline gives them to you so they keep you loyal. And they do a very good job at that, at keeping you loyal. So it's not about, you know, becoming the... The haughty guys walking onto the sitting in your first class seat with your nose up in the air, looking down at all those peasants walking by in the <laughs> aisle over there. It's just a matter of people who fly a lot, and it's a terrible drag to travel. And I will tell you something else: like the first week that I started all the, doing like all this travel, first couple of months I was doing a lot of travel. When I started with the vegetables, particularly, it's like a schmuck. And we get so many phone calls from people: I want to travel, join Kashrus World, and travel the world. I didn't travel for like ten months during COVID. And the first time I got back on a plane, I thought like, oh, I'd be ready to travel again and hit the road. I was like, can they cancel the flight, please? Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it is not I, glamorous. I it is feeling. a schlep. Not it is a not. complete schlep. Right, right. I'd much rather be home than anywhere else. So anyway, having said that, with airline meals, so getting a perk of having an airline meal on a plane when you're schlepping around from city to city to city like a Meshuggah, you know, for a, a couple, for a week straight, um, is sometimes, is very beneficial and could be very helpful, assuming that's a kosher uh, symbol on it. Now, the meals on airlines have to be sealed. Um, airlines mix meals up all the time. Certain routes, obviously, Tel Aviv routes all have kosher meals, but even San Francisco, Newark, and LA Newark now again started serving kosher meals. Delta has a few as well. I'm not familiar with Delta. You can ask Ray Goldberg, or Ray Tzvig, Shaul Goldberg. He's a Delta man. Um, I typically fly United. Um, the meals have to come sealed, completely sealed, and the companies that make the airline meals are United. It's Fresco, Stark is certified, so we know firsthand the meals are properly sealed and delivered to the airline sealed. If they are not sealed, do not eat it. Do not trust anybody's word or anything else other than what you see in front of you that the meal has to be sealed. The flight attendants mean well. They're here to help you and trying to help you. They're saying, oh, I just unwrapped it for you. I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to unwrap it for you. And they hand you the meal totally unsealed. Don't eat it. And I'll give you a story that literally just happened within the last few weeks. An uncle of mine texted me. He works at a big firm in New York, and they brought in pizza, I don't know, somebody's birthday or something like that. They get these kinds of things all the time. So obviously for the from people that work there, they bring in kosher pizza. And the office manager does the ordering, knows this, she knows the routine already. She's done this a hundred times. He texted me. He's like, they brought the pizza. They put it on the table. They put a sign, and this is the kosher table, as they do all the time. I didn't see any tape or seal or anything on the box to indicate that it was kosher pizza. She have got it from Bravo Pizza, which is, you know, everyone knows Bravo Pizza Shop. There's a kosher pizza shop down the block. He said, what do you think I should do? 
I said, and this was a text message, I said, that's a tough call. I mean, there's no simonim. You're completely relying on the fact that a, a non-Jewish person, as good meaning and as well-meaning as they are, well-intentioned as they are, don't keep kosher. So halakhali don't have them on us. And how do you know that it's a kosher pizza? There's nothing really you can do. Well, pepperoni might pizza, give it stop. away. Well, so this was a cheese pizza. Okay. <laughs> that was the first hint. Very good, right, buyer. Um, so they, so I, I said, you know, there's really very lucky thing. If you call the pizza shop and they confirm the order, then we could discuss it. He calls me back a half hour later, breathless, flustered, and, and shaking. He said he called the office manager and she made a simple mistake. She called Bravo Pizza and not Bravo Kosher Pizza. There's oh two my. pizza shops in the area. Jeez Louise. Okay. So as well-meaning, as well-intentioned, you, the, you know, how I, I, Chazal I, were much smarter than us. And they said your food needs Simonim. Your food should have Simonim. Let me At the same time. Question. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I... But an airline meal, Lamaisa, if it comes in, all they did was open it. You can see all the simonim everywhere. So if you can that. tell, if you can tell, but I'm talking about a situation you can't tell. Um, right. And that has happened to a number of people I know, this kind of situation. So, yes, if you can tell, then you're good to go. And that was actually segueing into the next point I was going to make. And that is the famous story that everyone talks about where a guy got up to wash, up and roped his corn reef and pastrami was sandwich. Was I heard like it was Kuleski. Yeah. Yeah. What? It was Ruf Kuleski. Anyways, he got right? up to... It was not Rav Klutsky. Maybe no, he wouldn't it? ask you this question on a smicha faher, even though he didn't faher on kufut ches, but okay, maybe he would ask just to, just to throw you a loop, which is like him. Anyway, so <laughs> um, he got up to wash, and he comes back, and he decided that his meal was Bashan Zalm and Ayin because he hadn't supervised, and it was sitting there open, and no other Jewish people around, or no other people paying attention to watching his meal, obviously. And he didn't eat it. And the person next to him said, you know, uh, why aren't you eating it? He said, because uh, Jewish law prohibits it if it's unsupervised from eating it. So the guy said to him, wow, your law really protected you because when you weren't looking, I, sl I slipped a piece of ham in there just to see what would happen if you eat it. Now, that story is, is very nice. I mean, I'm not sure if it's nice. It's baloney, pardon the pun. Um, it doesn't really make any sense, not halakhically and, and not practically. Practically speaking, I, I don't really believe people would actually do that. But let's say I'm, I'm naive and I've never seen a trickster before in my whole story in food service and dropping ashkachas and picking up ashkachas that happens constantly in this business. So I don't know what any about that. Fine. How lovely speaking, there's nothing wrong with it, at least for Ashkenazim, right? If you have TSI and you left, you opened your pastrami sandwich that was sealed properly or you brought it with you, you come back, your pastrami sandwich is still there, looks like you left it the same way it was before, 100% mutter to, for you to eat. Um, right. Plus also the fact little... that you're not going away for a long time. They got, right. you know, you're, you're just going you're just to wash and you're coming right back. There's really different. no problem. Right, Yodzev right. Nifem. So really that, that's no a, problem. Right, that's a story that we probably, probably didn't happen. Let me ask you before right. we uh, finish, Rabbi, Rabbi Ten. I know we could go on all day. Um, uh, do you have any practical tips for travel now in this in these difficult uh, times? Like, besides, don't. <laughs> um, yeah, besides, don't. Uh, you know, uh, practical tips in traveling. So let's see. Number one is that um, if flight is delayed and canceled, um, the best solution is never to go over to the customer service counter. Um, and try to wait on those lines that are a mile long from everyone else. Um, generally speaking, you get fast service by calling um, the customer service center, and usually they can help you just as much, or go to a different part of the airport and find a different customer service counter. Um, also, if you have online access, a lot of times they'll let you change your flights online. Um, this is something is a big point of frustration for many people. I know you wait online for hours just to get your flight changed. You could have called, you could have waited online, you could have gone online and, and done it yourself. In, in three minutes flat. Um, you know, I was once sitting, I once had the situation where I was, my flight landed late and I was going to miss my connecting flight. Um, I, I remember it was a very, very tight situation where it was the last time I did this. It was like the last flight out on a Thursday night. Never do that unless you're really stuck, especially now, right? If you're that last flight out that you're going to make it home before Shabbos, right? Be prepared to stay for Shabbos, okay? Always think that in the back of your head. If you're no, taking know what you're, back, I'm what you're saying time. is basically know what your options are if you're flying. Know what your options problem. are. Right. Anyways, but but I, I happened to be sitting next to a guy who was Global Services. For those uninitiated, Global Services is like the real snobs of the world um, who are, you know, who are like the highest. I'm only one K in the United. This is like you have to buy full fare. Oh, where'd he go? Uh -oh. Tell you how to get it. Okay. Anyway, I was sitting next to this guy. He called up United for me. Wait, Rabbi, tell him we're missing the story. I said, I'm only a lowly one K. He called up United for me. And, and instantly on the spot, they rerouted me, fixed the whole situation before I even got to the gate. You know what I mean? So, and that's, yeah, you happen to have been global services, but many times you can do the same thing on your own. If you call up on the phone, there's many times less hold time than waiting can, in line. Can we have your cell phone number um, so listed just, here so uh, that people can call you tip. for... Uh... Um, what else? <laughs> um, I don't know. What else? 
No, it's very good. You're giving us a lot of practical I think, information. I, I, I just want to say, if, if we have questions, uh, there, I'm sure people have. I see there's a lot of chats, and we're just not able to get to everything. Um, and uh, and Rabbi Tenla has a lot to say, and there's a lot to talk about. If you ha your question wasn't answered, you can reach us at 410-484-4110. Um, you can leave a message for Rabbi Tenler. Um, you can ask the front desk, our, our busy front desk. They know they know a, a lot. They have a a, a, um, a book that they work from. They can probably answer your question just like that. Or you can leave a message for Rabbi Tenler. Uh, you can email us at info at star-k.org. Um, and Rabbi Tenler is circling. <laughs> I think. I hope he's all right down there in downtown Baltimore. Okay. Squeegee you guys didn't get him. I hope he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Something happened to Rabbi Tully. Okay. That was not the way I wanted to end it, Rabbi Tully. <laughs> Let me see if he if he if he came on again. One second. Let's see if he's back. Um, I don't know where 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 he went. Um okay. Um uh th okay, Brach has been Next asking us. Okay, second. there you know what There now. you go. Brach has been asking us the following question. She wants to know uh, do frozen? we have hotels to recommend? that that uh, that do not use electronic keys uh and only you in america and only use the uh you know the regular old old, anyway, old style i guess keys. it's as reliable internet connection as reliable as flights being on time <laughs> okay can you hear us robert tenler robert tenler no i guess not okay so the question is the older hotels would, would be the ones to go for but uh well, not necessarily. The older hotels, they said they revamped themselves. Yeah. We don't, the answer is no, we don't have a list of such hotels. What I can tell you is that there are some hotels that are near some of the major from areas that make sure that they, uh, that they, that they keep those, those, uh, you know, those old style locks. In Eretz Yisrael, I think all of the hotels that are catering to such uh, from clientele do have what, what I've seen. They have uh, for Shabbos, they will give you. A, a, a regular key um, and they will take a deposit of like, you know, a hundred dollars to make sure they get it back. Well, after you know, there, what's the methodology that someone could use in, a, in an American hotel though, that has the electric locks, but you right behind them and holds right behind them and holds that you can, you can uh, ask the non-Jewish personnel to open it for you because it's right. a shvus, the shvus, the Malka mitzvah. It's one Durabonon on top of another Durabonon. And you're going in for a mitzvah to go to sleep or to get your food, whatever it is. And in that way, uh, that's that that that's that is he he allows that. On uh, in our article on hotels, we have a couple of other ideas of how to uh, deal with your door on Shabbos. But I would tell you to answer your question directly is that yes, there are some hotels. I don't we don't have a list of them uh, in the United States. Okay, Rabbi Bayer, I think we will call it. Uh, you know, uh, all right, call it the end of the webinar. There's so much more. To, uh, to talk about. We want to thank everyone for joining. Um, I think it was uh, informative, at least for me it was. Me too. Thank you, Rabbi Bayer, for joining us. Thank you, Rabbi uh, Farkas, if you're still listening. Thank you for, for joining us from Eretz Yisrael. Uh, I do want to mention just one more thing about Eretz Yisrael. There is, he's in, in, um, in uh, Ramat Eshkol, right. So in Ramat Eshkol, which is a neighborhood in Yerushalayim, uh, there's a mall. There's a strip mall, maybe with 30 stores. Okay. About eight or nine of them are food stores. There's a bagel shop and there's a pizza shop and there's a, there's a dairy and there's a meat and there's a, you know, there's a number of stores. Most of them have a good hashkocha, uh, either Rabbi Rubin or they have Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Wiener's hashkocha or they have, uh, you know, that, those type of hashkochas. Of course, you have to read the, the, the letter, the two da. So, we found like where and there's parking, <laughs> so what you have to pay for. Uh, but uh, so if you're looking for a place to go, I don't get any commission. I'm just saying personally, I found that you know there it's it's a good place. The mall in Ramad Eshkol has good restaurants that are that are acceptable hashgacha, and uh, and it's I found that to be a, a good place to uh, to to eat, um, and. Uh, Great. Rabbi Tendler is calling me. So hold on. Let me see what – this is old style. This is a phone. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi Tendler. Okay. We're still on. So do you want to come back on? Or you're basically, if we believe that we are we, – uh, we're ending that webinar. Okay. I want to thank you very much for joining us. 
All right. Take care. Be well. Okay. So um, again, thanks everyone for joining. This, these, these, uh, these webinars are archived on our website at star-k.org and also on our Vimeo channel. If you Google Vimeo uh, uh, star K kosher, you'll find them also on YouTube. So if you're interested, oh, on Paran Street, that's right. Moshe is telling us that that, that, um, that, I what uh, that was. Okay. Paran Street is where that mall is. And that's where I can, uh, I can, um, you can, you can get those. There's a little small meat place. It's like the size literally of my desk <laughs> yeah. and it's a hole in the wall and they, they, it's called Inburger and it has a good ashkocha and it's very good for a small place. They make burger after burger or a salad and a burger. And it's, it's actually, it's actually very good. And after struggling to find places that we can rely on and everybody would find, there's even like a pizza next to the burger. So some people can eat milk and some people can eat flesh over there. So everybody can be happy. Um, anyway, we want to wish you everybody at Slacha on your travels. Every, everybody should be safe and travel, travel well without any, uh, uh disruption, without any Agnes Nefesh. And we want to wish you a, uh, uh, a good Chodesh coming up for Chodesh of next week. And thank you again for joining. Uh, you will get a, a email. If you signed up for this, you will get an email uh, to sign up for the next one. And we hope that you'll join us uh, again in the future. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Be well. Bye-bye.